So um, when we want to play around Pimiola and start doing some interesting things with it, um, what you can do is pick a really simple pattern. And in this particular instance, I'm using uh, the basic samba pattern that we do on pandero, but you can do it in on any instrument that uses a grouping of four. So the top uh, notation up there is just one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a A. Ah. So we're working in the 16th note grid, which is that bottom one, 16, and we have four groups of four. Now we know, looking at our handy dandy little chart down there, that the same amount of notes in the eighth note triplet grid will fit in that same amount of space, which is that second line right there. <laughs> we go one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, ah. So the top one, four groups of four. The middle one, four groups of three. So 16 and 12. Now, what if, let's get into the math part of this, what if we take this group of four of one E and the the samba feel, and we want to put that into triplets, but keep those groupings of four. So we already have a grouping of four, and something times four is going to equal the 12 notes we need to fill in that triplet grid. So we need three groups of four to equal the same uh, number of notes as four groups of three, right? It's just going back and forth, and this is universal. Three groups of the four is exactly the same as four groups of three, and you can do this interchange whenever you want. As long as the tempo stays consistent and the subdivisions stay consistent, you can interchange those completely. So for example, I'm gonna start with the top line and work my way down. Um, the middle one's kind of a transition to get your, get your feel going with the triplets before going into the groups of four. So. If we're starting the 16th notes, one E and a two E and a three, then you go to triplets, one and a two and a three. Now groupings of four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You're gonna keep the feel of the triplet, triple, 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 triple. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. If our triplet, triple, triple, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So if you're practicing this on another instrument that maybe doesn't have all those fills in it, you can just hit the accents. Say if you're playing on a surdu or tamborin, Daniel or Lara, um, you can go into just hitting on the downbeats. If you're counting two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one. And it should line up where you're tapping your foot and where you're hitting, where you're counting back on beat one. So let's try speeding it up a little bit. So hopefully it feels a little bit more rhythmically comfortable for everybody. If we're thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, fuck, the fuck. So let's play it out and triplets. Let's just hang here for a second. Let's be comfortable with the triplets. And now we're gonna switch to the groupings of four. Two, ready, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the triplets. One, two, three, four. Groups of four. Triplets.
this stuff makes it really fun and these kind of ideas can be used as fills when you're playing maybe not necessarily straight ahead samba if you're in samba jihis like playing in a hoda with a lot of traditional samba people this will probably not fly this is kind of out of the box as they say but if you're playing with other musicians that can hang with this kind of stuff or this is more the vocabulary in jazz or latin jazz that kind of thing you can have a lot of fun with musicians who know how to play in this stuff and get different little feels going so as an example of that um one thing that's really fun is that you can throw a backbeat if you're looking at groups of fours If every other tone you make a backbeat, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, those are still groups of fours, so we can throw that into the triplet grid as well and create this feel where it makes it feel like the pulse is somewhere that it isn't. And part of the fun of being drummer is not only holding the groove, but also uh, messing with the beat a little bit and maybe making it feel in, like it's in places that it's not, which is very entertaining. So let's try this idea. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but every other note is gonna be low, high, low, high, okay? One and uh, two and the uh, first trip, let's go. One, two, three, here we go. And off. So if you're gonna divide the pattern up this way, uh, I kind of snuck ahead a little bit. One thing you have to see is that when you're making the pattern longer by going low, high, it's no longer a grouping of four, it's a grouping of eight. So to resolve this and come back to beat one, you need to play it twice as long to be able to come around. Because as you see in this graphic up here, it just takes four beats and a landing on beat one on the next bar for this whole idea to resolve and we all come back to one at the same time. But if we're doing dun ga dun ga, if, uh, looking at the yellow dots there, that's the beat one of the next measure is going to be a high note when it should be a low note. The pattern starts on a low note. So all you have to do is double it to uh, get the same number of cycles and resolve in the right place. And if you want to do it from a math perspective, um, you look at eight notes divided by three or times three gives you 24. Um, so this is where this stuff gets really fun. So your subdivisions are threes, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you're dealing in multiples of three and the pattern is eight, uh, eight eighth notes long and we're dealing with eighth notes as our subdivision. Eight times three is 24. And the cycle, that circular cycle that we're looking in is 12 eighth notes long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So for eight times three, 24, to resolve, you need to play it twice, which 12 times 12, 24. Um, but this is how you can think while you're playing this stuff, maybe how knowing how many times you need to play it is really important. Otherwise you're gonna resolve it in the wrong place. You'll be in the wrong place. Your bandmates might be in the right place. So it's really important to keep your counts going and know your math going into it and practice this stuff at home before you throw it at your friends. Um, and if you wanna take this stuff to the extreme out math to levels that are just amazing. Um, I would suggest getting into North Indian Tala counting systems. Um, this is the kind of stuff that tabla players and sitar players learn, where it's a spoken uh, form of rhythm, kitataka um, kitata, and they do some really intense stuff with math and music. Uh, if you're into this stuff, I would suggest finding a, a native teacher or a native taught teacher um, to dig into it because it's. It's out there, the stuff they do uh, with math and music, but we're not gonna go out there. I'm not an expert in that stuff. We're gonna keep it in twos and threes and fours. All right, so let's bring this back to the idea of samba, where um, we're gonna use the same concept and we're gonna use a samba beat and kind of fill it out here a little bit more, where normally samba, when we play, we go high, low, high. So just like that little backbeat thing we just did, it's an 8B pattern.
then we're going to use that as our cross pattern when we get into our triplets. So triple it, triple it, one, two, three, four, 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 one. And we end there on one. So we're using the same idea of groups of eights. Three eights equal the thing, equal 24, equal two bars. And uh, we're going to play through two of them. So let's try from the triplets. Ready and uh, go. And uh, one, two, three. Here comes Samba. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So again, for if you're not a European-centric music reader, that's totally fine. Just lo know we're looking at groups of fours, and then we're looking at groups of four still, but in the three subdivision, tapping your foot every three beats instead of every four. So let's go samba. Now we go to he, me, ola. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back. One, two, ready, and. Slow. Cool, so hopefully that makes sense and it creates this really cool almost slowing of time and it makes you want to tap your foot in a different place, which to me is the fun of rhythm of like kind of playing games with these rhythms. So I'm going to throw this up one more time and this time I'm going to bend the note um, to get that bing, boom, bing on the triplets as well as the 16th note. So just one more time, ready, um. perfect so I'm gonna do it one more time for me yeah awesome so that's a fun little game you can play now another thing you can do is that one, um, cut it in half. And instead of working in the triplet grid, work in the triplet 16th note grid. So we're still putting um, four note patterns over six, but instead of like four over three, it's four over six. So we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, 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 bah. And we end up all the way back at one. So if you can kind of see where on the sheets up there where you have the note heads versus the X's, the X's are like the back and forth, the heel toe, just the filler notes, but the accented notes are the, the full note heads there. And you can see this two over three pattern is still happening. The same idea of one, da, ba, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two, depending on how you want to divide it, we still have this feeling of two over three. So you keep the idea of what's happening on that top line as the accent of your foot or the accent of the metronome. And let me tell you, you must practice this stuff to a metronome. It's so easy to get pulled away from the beat or practice it slightly incorrectly if you are not using a metronome. So please, please, please practice to a metronome. There's tons of free metronome apps for your phone, or you can get one of these old school boss things right there. This is great too. Um, um, all right, so let's give this a shot. I moved down the metronome down to 60 BPM right now, just cause we're gonna get into some faster stuff. So go one, two, three, four. There's our groups of fours. Now 
let's go to six. Now, keep this subdivision. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're gonna go every four. Before, when we were looking in the eighth note grid, we were dealing with, uh, tw excuse me, 12 hits per measure per cycle. Now we're dealing with 24. So just like the math we did, we're six, we're dealing with groups of six, and then we divide that by, or times that by four, because we're group four groups of six, or six groups of four is our kind of back and forth that we can do. If we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, four, two, three, four, five, six, blah, it's four groups of six, or we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, blah, or six groups of four. The math works either way, it's interchangeable. So a lot of this just, you need to be really comfortable getting in and out of your 16th notes and triplets. Back and forth, they should be interchangeable going constantly in your mind, whether the more you practice this stuff, the more easy it is to switch between the two because once it's there, they're always there. And the idea is that you should just live with this idea of bra -bacatum, bra -bacatum, existing in your, in your rhythmic brain at all times. So you can draw from any of these sides, whether you're drawing from the triplet side or you're drawing from the 16th duplets, duple side, it's just there and you can grab it and pull it. And then the next level is to live in the land of four over three, uh, which is a whole other beast. So let's, Let's reverse this now. Right now we've been doing groups of uh, duple superimposed over groups of triple. Now let's take a group of triple and superimpose it over groups of duple, which I think a lot of us are a little bit more familiar with this. And um, if you've ever heard the phrase a cross pattern, this is essentially what this is. A cross pattern, especially in relation to Afrocentric music, is talking about a feel of beat that crosses over the beat line. So like we were just doing, the beat is here, but you're feeling it ba, 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 ba. That's a really simple, I mean, it's, it is straight hemiola, that is the term, that two over three. But a cross rhythm is something that where it feels like the accent is not necessarily lining up with the beat and is lining up with a different beat. Um, which we will explore right here. Okay, so in this one, um, the top of the yellow is in groups of duple. So we're looking at 16th notes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And just for reference, I ax um, made yellow every two beats. So you can either feel it as eighth notes, one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now on the bottom, in the orange is groupings of three, but put into that 16th note grid. So if we're counting normally one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, we're gonna keep that same subdivision of fours, but we're gonna accent every three. One, two, three, 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 one. If you notice, it doesn't, it takes a lot longer for it to resolve in a in beat one. We actually didn't even get there yet. It takes a lot more cycles to make it all the way around to a place where it uh, resolves on one. So if you notice, beat four is the first place that they line up. Ba, 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 ga, ba. And beat four can be a useful resolution place. In samba, we have this pattern a lot. Ba, 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 ba. 
that is this cross pattern right here, except we're just resolving it with a four and one to make it uh, have a nice round ending to it. So again, to count it out a little bit, if we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four groups of three, one, two, 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 three, and ends on three. Um, so that will cycle around many times. So you kind of have to pick and choose where you want to get on and off the bus, as they say. Once you get on a cross pattern, sometimes it's a little tricky to get off of it. Our cross patterns and syncopations, they are not the same. Um, cross patterns are quite syncopated very often, um, but they are not exactly the same thing. Syncopation just means things that are off the beat. So thing, something that is not syncopated is doomed. No syncopation whatsoever. Samba and a lot of uh, Afrocentric musics are very syncopated, where a lot of the beats, the accents are in places that are not lining up with where you would tap your foot. So, like telakateku um, is very syncopated, but telakateku is not really a cross pattern. Cross pattern is kind of borrowing borrowing this idea of rhythmic accents from another meter and imposing it into the one you're actually using. So specifically things where if you're playing this cross pattern of threes here, ba, 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 it feels like ba, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, ba, ba, even though the beat is ba, 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 ba. Hopefully that, that makes sense. So it, they are often syncopated, but I think um, they're not one and the same. They're, they, they apply in different situations. Um, I'm gonna play through that cycle twice. We saw that it resolved on beat four. Ba, 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 ba. So it takes three beats and then resolves on beat four. So if it's a three beat cycle, you play it twice. That gives us six beats, um, which is a measure and a half, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then resolve on seven, which would be beat three of the next bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Whereas since it's a three note pattern, ba, 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 with resolution on four. The resolution is not necessarily part of the pattern. The pattern itself without that resolution, one, ba, 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 like that's there, but that's the final note that comes at the end. Takes up three beats twice, six, beat seven is the resolution, or beat three of a grouping of four. So let's try that. We're gonna resolve on beat three and then come back to samba. Um, so here we go. Samba, ready, ready and. All right, here comes. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And throw in a classic little samba fill to bring it back around to resolve. One more time. One, two, ready. Knowing that it takes six beats plus a downbeat to resolve this pattern, we know that there's an extra beat, uh, really two beats um, that are extra, which means that if we want to resolve on one, all we have to do is move this pattern back to start two beats earlier. Um, and so this is part of thinking ahead of like, okay, I'm playing a solo. I wanna play a cool lick that resolves right on one. I want to play this particular lick. I need to know that I need to start it instead of on beat one, I need to start it on beat three because otherwise we're going to end on beat three. So rather than end on three, we're just going to scooch it back two spots and we're going to end up landing on one. So if I've got my counting system going here to, we're going to start on beat three. One, two, 
One, two, three, 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 one. And we're right there on that downbeat on beat one, because otherwise we would end up on the other side. So if you're playing samba, and you have a big climactic ending to your solo. Um, so let's check that out one more time here with the gnome. Ready, samba. So I'm going to end it on beat one, but we have to start it on beat three now. right on beat one. Woo! Yay! This stuff is so cool. Um, so again, it's just, if you think of the groupings, it's groupings of three. Let's see how many counts it takes. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. So it takes one, or excuse me, eight groupings of three plus the downbeat. So eight times three is 24. And we're dealing with six counts, six groupings of four, right? If we're going one, two, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, one. That's six groupings of four is 24. And then if we want to do it in groupings of three, we have to divide 24 by three. And you know that you need to do eight groupings of three to have the same length as you would have as uh, six groupings of four. Math, what? all of rhythm is math. And so if you're, if you're able to sit down and plot these things out, you don't even need to worry about all this rhythmic, uh, this notation here. All you need is a sheet of graph paper and divide it out into the places of the beat with your subdivisions and just put little X's in the spot that you're hitting and you know exactly where you are at all times. And it's to me very fun and I love this stuff. So let's take a, uh, a specific pattern here Blam. Okay, so um, I wanted to have an example of doing a pattern in triplets and transforming that into 16th notes. Um, so whether or not you can read this, don't even worry about it. The pattern I'm looking at is uh, like kind of a swing pattern. Doom, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, doom. That's the pattern that's shown on that top there. And if you just want to, don't worry about the filler notes, just. Now we're going to take that. We're dealing with eighth notes in the triplet grid. So 12 notes in total up here, but really it's a six note pattern, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And it, then it repeats. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, five. So it's a six note pattern and we're going to put that in groupings of four, right? Because we're dealing with going to one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. And you can see that just like we did in the other pattern, it resolves not on one, but it will resolve. If you start on one, it's going to resolve on three of the next bar. Um, so let's do, let's slow down the metronome a little bit. So here's our beat, one, two, three, four. I'm going to play that top pattern, then go into the transition bar, which is going to be 16th notes, just to make sure we feel comfortable switching between triplets and 16th notes. And then we'll try out putting this cross pattern, yeah, cross pattern in. Two, ready, and... Sixteenth notes. the cross pattern. And we made it. So this one's really fun. I don't know why this one tickles me so much, but I think this is a great little pattern. And we're going bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, two. And the feeling of it is just so interesting. If you just play it as in the 16th note grid as this cross pattern, two, ducka, three, e, and a, four, e, and a. If 
we didn't have the metronome going, it's really easy to just feel it as triple it. Bam. It's so slow. Two, two. And it resolves there. So let's try this transition here real quick. Let's go a hair faster. So we'll, I'll do this whole transition with the, the middle bar and all that stuff, and then we'll take out that middle bar. Ready, and... Sixteenth notes. Cross pattern. back to one now I'm gonna start that bottom pattern on beat three so we resolve on one here's the middle bar sixteenths now the cross pattern oh We ended on beat one right with the metronome and it's so cool all right um so i'm gonna do this now without the transition um bar in between and see how it goes so you can really hear how these are connected one two triple it go I'm going to start it on beat three so we resolve on one and hopefully go straight back into the triplet feel. One, two, three, four. One, two. One more time. One, two. It's a lot of brain busting right there, but it is so cool. Um, and you can do this with any combinations of patterns, whatever groupings you have. Like I was playing around with Foho on this. Um, if you're thinking, doom, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a grouping of three, three, and two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, or for a total of eight. And so it works the same way as this stuff here, where um, eight times three is 24. So that this idea of 24, these subdivisions work the same way, where this pattern in 16th notes, back at the back at the back, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, throw that into triplets. All you have to do is repeat it three times and it's going to equal the same number of, uh, it's going to resolve after three. So it would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, 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 one. And you land back on beat one. So I would challenge you at home to take some pattern, whatever pattern that happens to be, and try to put it, if it's a 16th note pattern or 8th note pattern, try putting it in the triplet grid. Or if it's a triplet pattern, something in groups of threes or sixes, uh, try putting it in the 16th note pattern. And do the math. It's kind of that you have to find the greatest common denominator between the two and then do your division from there. Um, and so maybe I'll do another class where we actually like work out the math on some more complicated stuff. So I think I'm going to leave that idea that with you all there and say thank you again for joining me hopefully that made sense 
we don't always think about math and rhythm uh, in this way, but it's always there in any stuff that we play. It's all about addition, subtraction, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Um, math applies to all of this, whether it's rhythm or uh, melodic stuff, harmonic stuff. We didn't even get to like this two over three relationship also exists in the golden ratio in chords and harmonics. And that stuff is wild and a whole other beast, which I'm not qualified to talk about. So on that note, I'm going to leave you one more time with this uh, awesome book up here, The Clave Matrix by David Penalosa. The link is in my bio. Um, if you do look at that link, um, I put it up through Amazon Smile, uh, which if you're not aware, if you're ordering stuff through Amazon, you can pick uh, nonprofit organizations where a portion of your uh, of what you buy goes to a nonprofit. You don't get charged any extra. Um, and I strongly suggest, or there are a lot of great organizations out there. If you want to uh, support one that I'm affiliated with, Supersonic Samba School, which is promoting Brazilian culture in San Diego. We have a uh, uh, an Amazon Smile account. So you can just search for us, Supersonic Samba, and that comes right up. And that always helps us out. Every little bit counts. So thank you all for joining. Um, as always, the virtual tip jar is in the class description as well. We've got PayPal and Venmo. Anything you can give helps. Always appreciated. Um, and if not, thanks again for joining in. Share the video. Tell your friends about it. All that is great. So thanks again, and I'll catch you all next time. Ciao, ciao.